If there's one standard gauge piece that I've always thought was the best looking, best designed of all, it is the Lionel 381E. That's one piece that I never thought I'd be able to find for a decent price, but then just while taking a look around recently, I actually managed to find a Williams reproduction for about half the price I ever thought I'd pay for one of these. And it's honestly in really good shape, but it does need a little bit of polishing up here and there. So let's see if I can get this ready in time for the Christmas tree to go up this year. I know this is going to need a lot of room to work on it, so I cleaned up a good space on the workbench. I'm still going to put down this uh, foam sheet that I got out of a box at some point. So that will give me a good soft work surface. And it looks like this is going to fit within the view of the camera, so that's good. On my last iPhone I didn't have that wide angle lens, so it would just been zoomed into about this one spot here at the minimum distance with my camera set up. So let's get started on this thing. I think the first thing I'll do is take out the motor here. And what I've read, the uh, Williams reproductions never actually came with a motor. That's something you added later, just with whatever choice of motor you wanted. This one here is not marked. So I'm not quite sure who made it. And the wheels are from Model Engineering Works, MEW. But I don't think that they made any actual reproduction motors for these. So this could have been... I don't think it's a McCoy motor either. From what I've read about McCoy, they usually put a big nameplate on them so that they're easily identifiable. So, and I know that the Williams motor that was made later on, it wasn't a traditional design like this. It had two can motors right there and there, each one driving an axle. So that was a really good one. But this is a definitely a traditional reproduction design. So it might be, um, I think I read about one possibility is KMT, which is not the same one that does HO scale brass, but instead um, Chris model trains, I guess they were called. So I've got the motor out of there. And let's see what else needs to be done. I want to be careful not to damage those panographs on top. This has been pulled apart possibly a few times before. see, is it just those two? Okay. How does this stay in here? I think there's a hook on the front of each one of these. So maybe I just, uh, there we go. Move it forward and back. And ease it on out. So that frees up the body. I see a couple extra screw holes on each end there. Something else I read is that um, these included large lead weights, I think lead weights, that went inside to give it some extra heft. All this one's heavy enough, it'll already pull whatever I want it to. Let's see. And then one screw holding each of these on. Hmm. Okay, so those aren't tightened into anything necessarily, or are they? Maybe I need to do this one instead. Okay. Those come apart just like that. There's quite a bit of scratching around here, so I might just give these uh, front and back pieces a quick repaint with some gloss black. It's a reproduction anyway, so it's not as if I'm hurting Lionel collector value. And I can see this has already had plenty of use and display time before. Well, I don't think it was run too much, but it's definitely seen some track time before. All right, so that screw came right out, so I think maybe this one is just a little bit stripped at the end. Yeah, seems that way. Well, it's not exactly how I wanted to go about things, but I wasn't really left with much of an option, so I just went ahead and cut the screw off. 
I know I'll be getting some replacement parts anyway, so I can just order a replacement for that, or even use something standard if I run out of options. And I'll see if I can retap that hole too to the correct threading. Anyway, let's see if this motor is working. Just looking around it, I mean, the grease on there still looks fresh and wet and everything, so. I'm not sure if I even need to re-grease it. Seems to be working. And so does the reverse unit. And it looks like the on-off switch for the reverse unit works just fine too. It's actually working pretty well. I'll still give it some cleanup though. Make sure the bearings have fresh oil wherever they need. Clean up the commutator a bit. Just standard stuff. Well, first I'll take the wheels out. And that's really easy to do on these uh, build a loco style motors. Just one thumb screw at each end. I bet I could get those looking nice and shiny too. Looks like they're made of brass. Plate comes off and this sprung contact touches right there. And the wheels lift right out. And they make up almost half the weight of this. And you can tell by the windings that it's definitely a modern motor. Lionel would have used cloth-wrapped magnet wire. Of course, that stuff is a lot more expensive, so you're v it's very unlikely that you're ever going to see it on a reproduction, except for one company that I know of. But I don't know if he's made the uh, 381 or not. I'll just wipe off some of that grease so that it's a little more pleasant to handle. I'm just looking around to the gear cover plate there. Some of the old grease is starting to dry up. So it may be best if I go ahead and clean the old stuff out, replace it with fresh grease. Well, the armature is in nice shape. So not much to do there. I'm looking at the uh, wheels, specifically the bearings. The grease is definitely drying up in them because that feels really stiff. They're not moving very well, so. Definitely a good idea to clean out the old stuff, even if it looked wet. Some of it was definitely long aged and dried out. So I'm just putting a few little drops of transmission fluid in each one. Still feels a little sticky. But I think that transmission fluid will kind of mix in and help to free it up so I can clean it out more and add a few more fresh drops. Okay, I've got this mostly put back together. Got some fresh oil and all the bearings. And it seems to be working pretty well too. So let's draw in just over an amp running free like that. Activate the E unit, reverse unit. Shifts to neutral, reverse, neutral, forward. It actually adds just about an amp to the overall current draw. Turns nice and smooth. All looks good. Hmm, I feel something seizing up. I wonder what's causing that. Well, I don't know exactly what the problem was, so I just swapped the left and right idler gears there and somehow that smoothed it out. So I guess these things just have really specific placement. 
So plate goes back on here, just like that. Put these screws back in. That should give those rollers some oil too. Rollers may not seem like such a big deal for oiling, but I've actually seen where these things have worn their um, little holes down into slots that let them just move up and down and all around. Okay, but this is looking good, so I think all I'm going to have to do for it now is uh, just add some grease to the gears and then buff these rims to look nice and shiny and new again. Yeah, let's just get some fresh grease in there. All right, I think that'll be enough. Buffing. I'll just uh, put my buffing wheel into here. Dremel. Get some fresh compound on there. Start that up again. And I'll let the motors do the work. That's getting a nice mirror polish on it. It's more what I expect to see on the real Lionel trains. Yeah, I'm disassembling the front and rear trucks for a bit of cleaning. Looks like it should be easy. And I can see it's just a screw on each side holding on this plate, which should be a retainer plate. Lifts off. Axles lift out. Make sure these springs don't fly away. Seems like they're still in good condition. It looks like these won't need much work. I think I'll just give them a bit of fresh oil and put it back together. Well, after doing a little bit of buffing around here because you can see the shine it's supposed to have and the shine that it does not have. So for the trucks, I'm just kind of giving them a quick cleaning. So this first one I've already taken apart and gotten it basically done. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of scrubbing some of the visible areas with Brasso. And then once that's cleaned up and the oxidation is off, then I'll take it over to my buffing wheel and just uh, shine it up a little more. You can see that it's definitely not perfect just because a lot of the tin plating is now gone. So that can't really look like it's supposed to again without fully replating it. But since this is mostly out of sight, um, I think that'll still look perfectly fine when this is done and on the track. All right, so now that the trucks are out of the way, let's see about getting some of the details off of these parts so that I can repaint them. So for this middle frame, it's just these two uh, um, caps here. Bend those tabs up real carefully. As you can see right there, just using the screwdriver to gently pry them up. And then that'll allow me to pull it out this way. And then the bottom just come down and out. Okay. Now for the uh, um, articulating frames, first thing I'll do is take these couplers off. That's just a snap ring in here, which you can see. Those can be taken out with some careful prying using a screwdriver. There it goes. And now that will just lift off and slip out from the front. I think I'm just going to replace these couplers. And let's see the steps. 
also hold these in place and these posts yeah these just unscrew from there these uh, flag posts so I'll take the screw out from there so there goes the ladder then that drops off from the other side I think I'll take off these corner handrails next these are held in place by those uh, nickel stanchions, or plated stanchions. We'll see what they actually are. Alright, those are bent out, and then this will just lift off. So, same thing over here. Bend, oops, that one just straight up broke. I didn't even put much pressure on that, so it must have already been really fatigued. Same thing for these. Bend out the two tabs on top, and the bottom drops out. Now let's see about getting the details off and out of the body. So the first thing I'll have to do is just uh, take the floor off, which means I'll have to unbend and untwist these tabs. That's not too bad, though. Twisted ones, you just grip and give them a quick motion like that. And the bent ones, it's just enough room that I can carefully, carefully grip them like this, and bend them up. And I think this will just lift up now. At least I hope it will. That would certainly make things easier. Okay, I just had to get an end started and now it's lifting off a little at a time. There we go, now I've got it off. And you can see that this is missing the lead weights that Lionel would have put in on originals, as well as a large top brace piece that goes all the way across from front to back. So the weights can be pretty easily replaced just by making some new ones and Maybe I will do that, just to get this up to its original um, traction. But as for this brace, well, there's not really much I can do there without finding an original. And looking at how this is built, I don't think that'll be necessary anyway. So this only has the two ladders on it. That'll make it real easy. Just gotta get these tabs bent out. Okay, and there it goes. And this piece is still in real good shape. Only a couple little scratches here and there, so I don't think I'll need to repaint it. I'll just clean it up, get rid of some of that dirt that's collected over the course of uh, 50 years or so. Now, next, I think I'll take off the panographs since they are particularly easy to damage. That's just two screws inside of here. And it drops right off. So I'll see if I can find a good way to clean the tarnish off of these and then maybe give them a coating so that they won't look like this again. And then there's also the, uh, I think that's supposed to be a whistle on the top there. Just this brass piece held in by one screw. See, I did test out all of the light bulbs, and all of these are still working, so I won't need to replace them. And that's good. I do need to work on these uh, headlights here. I found one screw just kind of floating around inside. I think it came from this one. So that'll help me get it back in place. For now, though, I think it just... I think it just pulled off. Oh no, I see. Okay, so this piece pulls out from the headlight. It's in there real tight. But I think it's just a pressure fit. There it goes. So now the headlight 
comes off like that. It's a little hook shape on the back. And then there's the front door here, which has its tabs twisted in place. Okay, there it goes. All right, pretty heavy tarnish on that door. That can be cleaned off because it is solid brass. Same for these marker lights. Each one's held on by a single screw. Hmm. Oh, there goes that. And it looks like that screw also holds the bracket onto the front there and then the marker light fits over it. So that holds all that in place and that allows you to change out the light bulbs without having to take apart the entire engine. And the rest of this is really just more of the same. Some twisted tabs for these pieces. They have painted plates that are fit behind brass plates that are the ventilation detail. Again, I just have to get that bent and twisted right so that it'll slip off. There it goes. Yeah, so these are just uh, painted parts left unpainted on one side. These just need a little cleaning and the brass needs some buffing. While I was looking at these marker lights, I thought they were supposed to be brass all around, but it turns out that the plate part is made of steel, tin plated, and they've actually just rusted to the point that they look the same as the brass. So that means I'll have to do a bit of disassembly here. First, I'll take out these color filter lenses. And then the brass has these tabs on the side. I think I can get away with just uh, doing one side and then the other will come out just like that. Okay. All right, so the brass part, I can just clean the tarnish off and buff that. The steel part, I'll have to figure out what I want to do with that. Well, there's the disassembled collection of details. The only brass parts that were lacquered were the nameplates here. So I think these are the only parts that won't need any work done on them. But as for the rest, they're going to take a fair amount of cleaning to get rid of tarnish, rust, anything else that can be preventing them from working or looking the way that they're supposed to. The paint on the body ended up being really easy to clean up, which is nice. So I started out just by kind of going around it with a damp paper towel until all the dirt was off. And then after that, I just kind of buffed over everything with a dry paper towel. And that seems to have shined it up to just about looking like new. Take care of the tarnish on the brass a little more quickly. I've put together this kind of mixed up sort of paste of baking soda and lemon juice. So I'm just gonna put the parts into this bath. Just kind of get them soaking, and leave them that way for a while. We'll see how that works. There are a lot of parts with a lot of tarnish on them. So hopefully this will save me some time. As for the pantographs, I have them soaking in some Brasso. I probably should have done this outside because this is some nasty smelling stuff. It's probably the, I think this has phosphorus in it, so that's probably where it's coming from, but yeah, definitely don't want to be breathing that. Well, after spending some hours just using those different solutions to try and get rid of the tarnish, I wasn't really having much luck, probably because it's on there so thick. So I'm just gonna use the traditional buffing wheels on the Dremel and bench tool. As for the pantographs though, I know that wasn't gonna work. So I had these taken over to uh, my family's company. They've got a sand blaster there. So I used the uh, glass bead blasting to clean these up. I think that did a good job. They look nice and bright now. So I'm just gonna try and buff some of the outside parts of this with the 
with the Dremel and see how that turns out. I think that's turned out looking pretty good. It's still not perfect. There are a few spots I just couldn't reach, but metal turned out pretty shiny. And I was actually having some trouble using the buffing wheels with this to get it nice and clean looking, so I instead ended up using a brass wire wheel. So it's not exactly a mirror shine that you can get with the uh, with the buffing wheel on flatter parts, but it did burnish the metal pretty nicely to a decent shine. So I'll give that a clear coat, and that should look good for a long time to come. And as for the larger parts, I'm using the bench wheel here to do it. And that does a real good job. It uh, keeps the shine nice and even. A few minutes later, and this is shining like a mirror. Well, these sure turned out nice and shiny. I'll just clean them up real quick and give them a quick shot of Tester's gloss lacquer, and that'll protect them for a long time to come. So just a quick shot like that. Give them a nice smooth coat. And I'll give that about an hour to dry. Well, the clear coat on these plates is dry now, so they're ready to put back on. So as I complete each piece, and since I've already got the body clean, I'm going to go ahead and put them back on as I finish them. Now these, before I put them back on, I'll just uh, clean up these plates that go behind them a little bit. I'm just using a damp paper towel for that. Since the parts themselves are in good condition, all I need to do is wipe off a little bit of old dirt. There, that'll be good enough. So now when I put them on, everything will look nice and clean and as close to brand new as I can get. Now, of course, to get that back into the body, just start with the brass plate, drop that on there. And now the green plate. And then carefully bend those tabs down. piece of aluminum. Let's try this. There we go. That's bending down now. Yeah. Okay. They're not bent down flat, but that's more than enough to hold it in place. And that looks real nice. Okay, so there's quite a bit to do with these parts here. I mean, just uh, polishing on the brass pieces, which isn't too hard. What's a little more difficult, though, is these steel parts. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, taking off the rust just with a wire wheel, and then I'm just kind of flattening this out and sanding it down as smooth as possible before giving it a real good buffing. And then I'm electroplating them and buffing them one more time. So far, I've got one finished. It's not quite perfect, so I might give it one more shot with some sanding and plating, but I think you can see just how much of a difference all the work is making. Okay, so I've got this sanded and polished to as high of a shine as I can get it. It's not plated yet, so that comes up next. And to do that, I'm using Caswell's Copy Chrome Plating Solution. Now this was made as a brush plating kit, but I found that you can also do full immersion electroplating. So the way to do that, after getting the part as absolutely clean as possible, just make sure one end of the wand is dipped into the solution, and then dip the other part in, and the plating process will start immediately but it will take a few minutes to finish. Well, I think I've done about all I can with this on plating and polishing. It's not perfect, and I don't think I'll be able to get much better without more professional tools for the job, but it is a massive improvement. Continuing with the buffing process, I usually end up with some leftover residue and dirt left behind inside, which you can especially see on the back just the black stuff that's left over from polishing. It's something I wish I had learned a long time ago that I just found out about. 
so that you can soak this stuff in mineral spirits, or paint thinner, basically, and it'll actually dissolve that stuff. So I'll just leave that in there for a few minutes, brush it clean, and then uh, wash it off. Things are coming along well. I'm down to just having to polish these um, journal bearing covers and then the handrail parts, but the rest of the main parts are all finished. And I've actually got the doors and windows all coated now, so I'm going to go ahead and put those on. Also, um, since the uh, Lionel plates here were already lacquered from the factory, they never tarnished, so I decided not to do anything with them, just leave them as is. So, windows just fit right in here, like that. Same for the door, fits right back onto those tabs. And then the nameplate. For some reason, the nameplates were just taped in here instead of having the tabs bent down properly. I don't know why that was. Now let's take my piece of aluminum here and bend these tabs. So these tabs really are tough to bend down. This metal seems to be a lot thicker than what was used on the O-Gage Lionel cars I have. There, that's nice and tight. That is looking really, really good. My polishing may not be factory level, but I think it's still more than acceptable. Before I put a fresh coat of paint on these frame pieces, I'm just giving them a quick light sanding around some of the scratched or dented areas, just to help things blend a little more, take a bit of oxidation off the metal. I decided not to strip the paint entirely because it's mostly in good condition, really, so just doing a quick overcoat. I've got all the parts polished and I'm coating them right now, but before I get to work on reassembly, I just want to paint some red into these spokes, because a lot of that has chipped out over the years. So this isn't an official Lionel color here, this is just a colonial red, which I think I got from either Krylon or Rust-Oleum, one of the two. I just sprayed it into a cup and I'm brushing that on. Seems to be doing just fine. So since I've decided to try and bring this up to the weight of an original Lionel, I've cast these two lead weights here. I just created an aluminum mold and then melted some pure lead inside of it, which is a dangerous process by the way, so I wouldn't recommend replicating it. But I'll paint these black and then mount them with screws to the chassis. And the frame ready to put back in place. Got the ladders on there. They turned out really well. I also got the lead weights in place. Attached them with screws. Painted them black. That had some good hefts to it. So now one last thing I'm doing is I'm actually putting these little foam pieces in place at the corners right here, which is kind of the main point of scratching for the articulating frames. I know that's definitely not in the original design, but this will help to prevent some scratches. So just a little dot of glue there, stick that in place, and it'll barely be noticeable when the thing is on its wheels. So the next thing I want to put on is the handrails for the body, since these will be some of the most difficult parts, so I don't want to have any of the more fragile parts on there while I get these in place. So I just need to slip some of these stanchions in place. I have a combination of old and new ones since quite a bit of the old ones were breaking. So I'm using the... they all look good, but I'm using the new ones in the most visible areas. Just getting all of these in place without causing any scratches or damage anywhere. So what I'm going to do is start with these on the side. Just 
slip one into there. Squeeze lightly so that the tabs can fit in. Okay, just uh, kind of ease this into place. All right, these soft ones are definitely the most difficult. But now that's in place, I'll start by bending the tabs out on the middle one. And then just work my way out from there. Okay, the rest of the railings are on there. I didn't show that since installation was kind of the same as the rest of the railings, so now that all that's on, I can get to installing the rest of the parts on the body. So I'm going to start with the uh, panograph here. So just kind of uh, gently keep this in place while I put the screws back in. That looks pretty good on there, even if it's not as shiny as the buffed parts. Now next up, the whistle. So again, line that up. And let's see if I remember right, this used these really short screws. And then the headlight. And I gave these a fresh coat of brass color paint since the old paint was kind of fading and worn off in a few areas. And now with all those details in place, next up is the headlight and wiring. Start with the headlight contacts. Make sure that the contact piece is facing forward. Press that down in there. And then there are the fixed up headlight pieces here, which looks so much better than before. So the bulbs kind of go around the front here into this, uh, slight recess in the metal. Marker light plate fits over that. And then one of these screws goes in the front to hold it in place. Okay, that is on there. Straighten that out a little. And I'm making sure that the uh, green lenses are on one end and the red lenses are on the other. Before putting the frame back on, I thought it would be a good idea to test out the lights. And I'm glad I did because the headlight and reverse light weren't actually working at first. I found out it's because that screw down there that's holding the headlight in place was just a little bit too long and it was blocking the bulb from going in. So I just added a washer to each one and that corrected the fit. And now all of the lights are working just the way they're supposed to. Now putting the frame on. Just direct this wire through the middle there. And then set this down on top over those tabs. Make sure that's all firmly set in place where it needs to be. And now I just need to bend these tabs down to hold it all together. Now before I bend this tab down on each side, I'm placing the copper pipe into there. And then just kind of snapping it in place. Then once that's in there, now I can bend the tab down. And that's not going anywhere. And now with the body finished, I'll get to work on putting the chassis back together. So the main piece here only gets two of these bearing caps on it. So just, uh, Slide that in there. Make sure all three of the tabs go in place. And then bend those two down. Now to get the ladders and flag post holders in place, 
First I'll just uh, put a screw into the ladder there and guide that into the screw hole here. Screw that on a little. Now from this point on, all I have to do is tighten it. And now with that on there, screw in the flagpole, which currently has no flags on it, but I can put those on at any time. Then installation of those handrails was of course the same as on the body, so that's done. All that's left now is to put on the new coupler, since I decided not to fix the old ones. They were a little too damaged. Just push, push this clip onto here. That's a lot easier with pliers. There, I've got that started. Oh, guess that clip was about done. Seems to be staying on tight though, even if it's just a piece of the clip. Hmm, or maybe not. Let's see if I've got something else. Okay, I made this little cotter pin from some steel wire. Let's try this again. There we go, that snapped on. And that is holding the coupler in place. So it looks like that's going to work. So now, just put that back onto the truck. Screw that down good and tight. And now that's ready to reassemble to the center chassis. Get those lined up in there. Screw that back in. supplier I was getting parts from didn't have any more of these shoulder screws available so I just improvised came up with this using an 832 an old Tyco brass wheel and then some more metal tubing that I cut to shape I think that's gonna work just fine now to assemble that back to the body, you just have to make sure that the chassis lines up with this one pin here. So it does have a front and a back. Not quite sure why, since the front and back are basically identical on here. Got to get the trucks into the slots. Okay, got those in there. That was a little bit tricky to get in place. It looks like I ended up nicking the paint in one or two spots, but I can just touch that up easy enough with a brush. There we go. We are almost done here. Just got to reconnect this wire to the motor. Just loop that in there. Tighten the screw down. All right. Push that up inside. Slide that on in all the way. And then Turn these two pins to lock it in. And that is now all reassembled. And there is the finished model, looking as good as it ever will. Shining that metal up really made a huge difference, going back to the original shot I took at the beginning. You can really see just uh, how much of a change there was. And just in time for Christmas too. So let's put this thing under the tree and see how it looks.